Good morning. And uh, despite it being a little bit of an early start, come up the coast, 20 minutes, something like that. And we're now at the top end of Druidge Bay, bottom end of Hawksley. And it's quite convenient here because there's a little service road that goes right next to the beach. Somebody's conveniently placed a bench there, which is now acting as a little tripod for me phone while it does a time lapse. So, and it's a broken sky. So, with any luck, once the sun comes up, it'll actually be something that's worth getting a couple of photographs of and a bit of a time lapse. Once that's done, we'll crack on. But I'm just tucked behind the car at the minute just to make sure I'm out of the wind, but. Um, it's fairly still anyway, it's only a breeze, it's not blowing a gale. It's next to a nature reserve this place, so... I don't know if you pick these up in the background coming over, but there's always loads of migrating birds. Cormorants, I think, them. They'll not be migrating. Convened the uh, the wind has completely dropped off. There's not a breath. So uh, I set the time lapse up, pointing in the slightly in the wrong direction, um, and there was no wind. I had a look at it, and there was, I thought it was a photograph. It was that still. But uh, so I've come down onto the beach, and as you can see, I've beat the Germans in the towels. I know other people that do YouTube videos say get yourselves out and about, you know, it's worth it. But it really is. And I did a couple of sunrises during the middle of lockdown in June, July, and it was you had to be up at like half four in the morning, get yourself down the beach, which was it was quite nice because it there seemed to be a bit of a craze going on with everybody um bored and everything. The, we went down the beach one morning, it was half past four in the morning, and there was families turning up in the onesies and blankets and stuff just sitting on the prom watching the sun come up it was ice but now the weather's turned a little bit probably a bit more of a reluctance to be doing that kind of stuff but just check the forecast we've had a miserable week but today it's forecast to be good so put get yourself out and about you can see it's, it's been worth it definitely Got my tripod configuration going on there. So hopefully this time lapse turns out a little bit better. I'll bring you back in a bit. There we are folks. Just up on the Northumberland coast. Lovely and still. I'm not going to crack on too much talking. I'm going to head down to where I'm going because we're at about low tide in about five to ten minutes. So I want to get down to the get down to the low water mark, see what we can get, and then work our way back up the beach. I'm actually after some prawns. Here we are down on the shore. It's a cracking morning. I knew it wasn't going to be raining, but that's all I was hoping for, really, was no rain. And it's uh, it's absolutely spot on. We came down here a couple of, well, maybe a week ago, and uh, the tide was just starting to go out. 
so I didn't really see this expanse of rocks in all its glory. We had to tiptoe around the top end of the beach up here just to get round, but uh, as I say, the tide's probably just at about its lowest now. Uh, I don't think it's a particularly low tide. So, we'll work our way down here, as far as we can go, get to the low spot, see what we can find. I do get quite envious of the lads in Cornwall that make videos, because they'll walk around places like this now, and they'll be seeing scallop shells and razor clams, and we do get a good good deal of sea life but we're not quite as rich in terms of some of the shellfish that they get I love this bit of coast here with the um, the different formations that you get within the rock itself this is pretty typical here these kind of must be from the stones swirling around and then these pools here the sun across the way where we go co-steering literally a few hundred yards up there and they're like little natural jacuzzi size things like a four person jacuzzi you get yourself in there and sit there it's not bloody freezing and there's no bubbles but it's uh, as a natural little oasis it looks great that's not bad for the first little two seconds uh, of all I did was got my fishing net went under this little ledge here and then flicked all the weed out the way and then literally just drag my net under the ledge like so and come out with this bad boy look at him quite appropriate for Halloween now I think these are called a bullhead scorpion fish see so he's got spines all up the back there all round the side <laughs> a right miserable look on his face look at that looks prehistoric doesn't it Oop. come on mate we'll let you go It's like a, almost like a bat, the way it puts its wings out. Wings, fins, but it looks like a bat's wings, doesn't it? Get yourself in there. Go on then. Massive mouth for a little fish. Back away under the weed. Oh well. I'll settle that for the first little five minutes. Would you believe it's actually too sunny? I'm trying to look in these rock pools here and they dazzle off the sun. <laughs> it's blinding. So, uh, but we're, we're down pretty much now as far as we can get to. I'm going to start, I'll work my way along this ridge line here and then start going back up the beach. But while I'm here, there's a couple of seaweeds that I want to try so this one here is thong weed you can see that's snapped off just there but they look funny when they're growing they've got like this funny little mushroom going on and then the thong weed grows out of it seemingly it's uh, it's quite a good superfood you can use it as like Allegedly, organic spaghetti, so I'm going to take some of that. We'll give that a whirl. And then come over. You've got to be blooming careful, it's dead slippery. Come back over this way. I'll show you another one. So. I don't know what the name for this one is here, but when you get it, it looks like looks like little um, like off a conifer tree, little fir thing. 
when you eat it. It's got a very, it's quite a pungent sort of almost garlic taste to it. I mean, you wouldn't want, you wouldn't want a lot, but just to add a bit of flavour. It's good. You also just be careful how you pick it, because what tends to happen is you get all the grit comes off. Um, just, it's not a bad idea to have a pair of scissors and cut it. But anyway, I can clean it up when I get back. Right, bloody hell. I never thought I'd need a pair of welding goggles to go rock pool in, but today could be the day. We'll crack on. Another little Blenny Gobi fishy thing. Surprising they're not even in the water when you find them, they're just under a rock. Popping back in. Oh, he's alright. Big old whelk shell there. So we've got ourselves here a little squat lobster. Massive great claws on him. Quite quick underwater the way they flick the tail. Oop. There we go. To the antenna. Cracking little creature. Popping back in. Come on, you bugger. Straight away into his little arm. Can you see this here? This is a squat lobster, but with some really bright, vivid colours on it. Blue on the back and then bright red tips to the claws. Edible crab as well. Wheel. The gun ball then. See if we can put him on the, the rock and have a. Come on, let go. Oop. I don't know I've been there. Exposed. Yep, bugger. Okay. Look at that little lad. I've seen them before, but never so brightly coloured. Great big uh, antenna sticking out there. Popping back. Just went to uh, move all the shells and bits of sand and stuff out the bottom of my net. I just scooped it up. I've got two of them, like buses. Cracking little things. Look at all these porcelain crabs there. Great to see such a good population. One, two, three, four, five. Probably a dozen there, all under one rock. This little fella here crawled out the rock pool and he's uh, he's had a rock hard pill for breakfast. Him come across quite a lot of anemones in this bit here. The green one here and a red one here. Let's have a look under there. Can you see that prawn? Oh. Buggers. There he is. Like a bloody lobster him. Where's he gone? Come on. I need two hands for this. I think we might have had him. Look at that bad boy in there.
getting put in the bucket. Been a bit for the environment as well, just found that stuck in the rock pool right down the beach. See how long it's been there, it's made out of metal on the bottom, it's just totally corroded. But uh, if ever you do find a lobster pot and it's in good condition, generally speaking you'll find that they've got a tag on like that, different colours, and they've normally got an ID number on. Now that one, Christ knows long how old that is. Um, fair to say it's well out of date but if you get the the number um, and it's in good condition if you can put it somewhere safe where it's not going to get washed away and contact your local fisheries department they'll have a register of who it belongs to and get it collected so we've done it about three or four times this year with pot markers and stuff well folks I'm absolutely sweating like a fat lass at a disco here the uh, about half past ten now, so I've had a couple of hours, tide's starting to come in, um, didn't find any lobsters, kind of got carried away a bit on the on the looking for lobsters, and then forgot about the prawns, looked at me watch and I thought, better crack on. Um, so I've got a few, got some seaweed, uh, got some limpets, so we'll just have a little bit of a cook up later, and uh, what a cracking morning, I didn't expect this. It's hardly a breath of wind, day before Halloween. I've seen about three or four people walking past. This is the northeast coastal path here. But uh, that's a cracking little wild camping spot there. My son was up on top of that the other day. You can come around the back and climb up on it. So, if there's anything to report on the way back to the car, I'll let you know. Well, I'm doing the sign off back in the car. Um, when I got here, at 8 o'clock I was the only car, there's about 20 parked up now. So it's the uh, last day of half term holidays for the kids and I think everybody's seen the sunshine and thought they'd get out and enjoy it and fair play to them. But um just wanted to thank other YouTubers as well. Um, you know it's been a long old summer and it looks like it's going to be a long old winter. And uh, I've had an injured knee which has hampered me getting out and about. But I've thoroughly enjoyed watching loads of people's videos. Um, fishing and camping and hiking and walking and you know I think it's just brilliant that you can get your little fix of the outdoors without actually going outdoors and I think that's going to be even more important now going into the winter with potential lockdowns and you know dark nights it's it's easy to get into a doom and gloom mood but uh, keep your pecker up get yourselves out and about you know there's plenty of clothing out there your skin's waterproof so just get out and enjoy yourself even uh, even when the weather's crap, we've been out every day this week, pouring rain, and uh, it's been great to be fair, really good. So, right, so in there's the contents of the bucket, which contains limpets and jumpy prawns, thongweed, and that furweed stuff that I can't remember the name for. So, I'm going to start getting it all cooked up. I'm going to make a little bit of a just an easy paella y risotto -y type thing, I think. So I'll bring you back in a minute. So first off, I boiled up the limpets, uh, took them out and then diced them up. Then I popped the uh, prawns into a pan with the limpets that I chopped up, give them a stir, and added a little bit of chilli, and then I did put some rice in to boil, and got that up, paella rice, and uh, added in the boiled thong weed and ended up with a finished dish of paella, and it was great. Right then folks, just come back to do a little wrap up. Um, that was spot on the lunch. It's uh, the, the limpets were still a little bit chewy, um, but the, the seaweed was, was all right. It was a bit like uh, green beans, didn't really have a lot of taste, but just in terms of greening up your meal and, and giving yourself a bit of bulk with it, it was, it was okay. Uh, and the prawns were alright, but a bit on the small side to be fair. So, um, yeah, ideally you'd love to have bass and lobster and stuff every day, but just as a little leg stretcher, it was worth doing. And now what would be brilliant to top it off would be to get a view of the dolphins, which are They've been down the coast 
two pods this afternoon and it'd be a lovely day for spotting them because it's dead flat but can't see any as it stands so on that note I'll bid you farewell and I'll see you on the next one. Ta-da!